Video number one. Uh, we'll, today we'll be talking about the Book of Song of Solomon. But before we get started, I want to mention um, I'm deleting my older videos on this new channel because there's some copyright issues um, with me mentioning books and holding pictures of books up, and I don't want to get sued, so I'm just going to delete them, and I'll just start from scratch again. Um, and then this time, you know, I'll just leave up the videos because I won't have any copyright issues, and I'm not changing YouTube channels again. Uh, number two, um, I've been a little bit busy with school, so I haven't been able to upload videos very often, but I have been trying to figure out some way to show PowerPoint slides on the thing and talk uh, over the PowerPoint slides rather than just having my face. Um, well, anyways, as I said, today we'll be talking about uh, the Book of Song of Solomon. Uh, please excuse the background noise. A uh, little bit noisy around my house today. Um, number one, let's talk about who wrote it. Um, now, in verse 1, it talks about, you know, the song being Solomon's, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Solomon himself wrote it. It could have been, like, a, um, kind of like what you would think of as, like, kind of like a court jester, you know, uh, someone who, uh, did songs for the king, uh, could have had something to do with his, with one of his weddings or something like that. Um, it could have also, really loud today. Um, it could have also been written by an admirer of King Solomon. You know, it wasn't necessarily written by King Solomon. A lot of people who think that King Solomon wasn't the actual writer, I mentioned the fact that he seems kind of uh, distant in the writing. He's, he doesn't seem, you know, he seems like someone who's being idealized rather, rather than someone who's actually uh, in the story, you know, writing about it firsthand, which I can kind of see the point. Um, number two, uh, the date. When was it written? Uh, Probably around 950 BC, uh, the time of King Solomon's reign. Um, the theme, we'll get into that after I talk about allegory. Um, there's a few different interpretations. There's allegorical, where this stands for this. Okay. Then there's um, anthology, which basically s says that it's a uh, love poem. And then there is uh, Schaeffer Hypothesis, which says that there's a shepherd and this woman, and King Solomon's trying to take the woman from the shepherd, and then she decides not to, and she stays with the shepherd. Uh, I'm not really going to get into that view because I personally see it as a waste of time. If that is really the um, if that is really the interpretation, I have no idea what the book even means anymore. You know, um, so. Um, on to allegory. I want to talk for a few minutes about um, allegory in the book of uh, Song of Solomon. Um, the, some, some Jews uh, held that Song of Solomon was a allegorical love poem song between Yahweh and Israel. And some Christians hold that it, it is uh, symbolic of the love between Christ and the church. Um, To counter that, let me say right off, I don't think it's an allegory uh, for a few reasons. Number one, um, it doesn't imply anywhere in there that it is an allegory, you know, which sometimes allegories don't. But when you take that with the fact that other writings at the time, writings that were at the time that were not allegorical, that were just love poems and songs, uh, they had the same setup, the same language, the same kind of themes going on. So to say that this one is different from all the other ones, it, it, very unlikely. Very unlikely. Um, there's a lot of metaphors in the book that we just can't understand. Whether, whether we uh, talk about it as an allegorical book or whether we talk about it as a literal book. Uh, there's just a lot of metaphors that we don't understand. There's a lot of metaphors in, in the book that um, don't really make sense to us in the here and now. Like when he's talking about uh, her teeth, like a flock of sheep, and we think you know, it's kind of, but, you know, uh, different culture, different people. Um, so then the church might say, well, let me back up a second. Um, to counter the whole view that that it's a metaphor, allegor, allegory between Christ and the church, the church wasn't even around yet. You know, and of course you could say, oh, well, it could be prophecy. Well, there's nothing in it that implies prophecy. And once again, the other writings at the time, 
are very similar, and nobody sees them as, as prophecy or allegory. It's most likely it's just a collection of songs. But if you are going to do allegory, it makes more sense that it is between uh, Yahweh and Israel than Christ and the Church. The Christ and the Church one just doesn't make sense, unless you bring in the thing about the, the Christians being grafted in. But that just gets into a whole... Um, discussion that I don't really see as profitable for this time. Um, the, I think the main thing that we pull out of the book of Song of Solomon is that it shows the marital intimacy that God intended for his creation. It shows uh, that it's okay to be sexual and not just sexual but also intimate with your spouse. Um, I don't hold to the view that it's talking about sex before marriage you know, if you really want to get into that kind of stuff, of splitting hairs and uh, trying to really make a doctrine or theology out of it, uh, you can go to pretty much any commentaries. Um, you know, uh, uh, the English Standard Version of the Bible has a, has a study version of it, and it has a brief, real brief in, uh, introduction to it there that you can really get wrapped up there. But I believe that there's uh, five main points that the book really can say to any married couple, regardless of, uh, of time um, and culture. Number one is delight in those things that are in your spouse. Uh, throughout the book, they're praising each other for traits that they have. You know, oftentimes, as a married couple, we can point out the bad all the time or, or constantly try to expect more from our spouse than they are, you know, uh, constantly get them to change and stuff. But, I, but throughout the book, they're just praising each other for what they are. Um, Number two, uh, I believe that it has a call in there to stay faithful. And uh, I already commented on the fact that King Solomon had so many wives and concubines and stuff, but once again, polygamy for royalty at that time was not, you know, that big of a deal, um, even though God has always been against it. Um, uh, where I'm getting the stay faithful thing is he talks about the, the garden that's been locked away. You know, uh, it's something between um, when, when a woman when you ha you're married to someone who ha who's a virgin and you know they haven't slept around you don't have to worry about diseases you don't have to worry about you know past luggage that they're bringing in there's this pride that you get from knowing that her body has only always been yours you know you don't have to worry about uh, different things now I, kn I know there's I know there's, this brings up the thing, well, what if somebody was raped, or what if, you know, somebody was saved after they, you know, slept around, or something like that. Well, you know, that's just a special circumstance, and um, for the purpose of this discussion, we're not really going to get into that, but um, I think it's important to point towards the love and forgiveness of God for that one, um, and that really, uh, God takes care of that, but I'm, I, once again, I'm not really the one to get into that right now. Um, number three, I believe that it's telling us to encourage our spouses. Um, let them know that you appreciate them. We see this throughout the book, you know, about how kind of, this goes hand in hand with the um, delighting in, in your spouse. Um, and number four, don't hesitate to repair damage after a fight. Um, where I'm getting this from is where she's gone to bed and, you know, King Solomon comes and knocks, and she says, oh, I'm busy. Um, she doesn't really, you know, she's letting something uh, uh, that she sees as important at the time prevent her from being intimate with her spouse. Uh, and I think it's important that we don't, as a married couple, we don't do that. You know, it, it may be important, sure, but don't let something separate you from being intimate and being known by your spouse. Um, number five, uh, live boldly for your spouse, uh, so that others around you will see that and allow it to impact their, uh, marital relationship. Um, those are just five things that I believe that the Book of Song, Song of Solomon shows us as married couple, as married couples. Um, so just in, in real brief, it could have been written by Song of Solomon or by an admirer, uh, written around 950 B.C., um, judging by its form, it's probably not an allegory. It's probably just a love poem, a series of so songs. Um, and it shows that mar that marital intimacy is okay. Um, uh, you know, love, uh, these kinds of things, they're feelings you know, that God gave us. And so, yeah.
Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, have a great day. Stay tuned for another video.